Now, the first thing to know is there's only one way to think about narcissistic abuse, and you already know what it is, and you need no more information. And that's why you don't constantly and repeatedly watch YouTube videos about narcissism, because you already know everything there is to know. It fixed you, it healed you, and you've moved on. Good day, good night, and goodbye. Except that, that isn't true, is it? What I'm suggesting, what I hypothesize, is that we, uh, in between, somewhere between psychiatry, psychotherapy, counseling, and YouTube land, which is now a very real contributor to the uh, narcissistic abuse uh, concept, the, the, the knowledge that we have. Certainly, it's the biggest disseminator of knowledge that we have. Not the best, but the biggest disseminator of knowledge that we have about the subject. And now we have this spontaneously evolved map, this worldview, uh, that can at times deviate pretty significantly from what the clinical research indicates. And it deviates pretty significantly from what a counselor, a therapist, or a psychiatrist who specializes in narcissistic abuse would say is useful for you to be thinking about the subject. Because the way we conceptualize a problem dictates the way in which we formulate the solution to that problem. So if you have a view of a problem, a map in essence, that isn't a very good map, it's a map. It's not inaccurate, it's not faulty, it's just not very nuanced, it's missing pieces. So there's actually pieces missing on the map and there's certain things that the map maker focused on because at that time and in that place, maybe it's a 300 year old map, I don't know. Or that person just had a specific central nervous system that was adapted to certain dangers, to certain pains, to certain pleasures, to certain rewards, to certain uh, treasures in the environment. And now we're all operating from this collectively created, possibly out of date, possibly not very smart map. And what I want to suggest to you is that it is a map that's been developed by central nervous systems that are frayed, that are damaged. Those of us coming out of narcissistically abusive relationships, and I include myself in this, our perception of reality is warped by the fact that we're so heavily emotionally dysregulated. And the things that we fixate upon and the things we think are dangerous sometimes are not. And the things we think are going to help us and are safe sometimes really are not. And we're the ones creating the maps, not people calmly and objectively and with a discipline piecing things together for the sake of peer review. Because YouTube and the online space, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok now as well, is the biggest contributor to the available information to humankind on this subject. And the map that we're building, I'm suggesting, is a sick map developed by sick people. And I'm not having a pop, I'm just trying to be honest because I don't think it's kind to keep people locked in illusion. It's largely created, largely, not all, largely the thick end of the wedge by people who would rather watch TikTok videos than go to therapy. They would rather post their various complaints on Facebook groups than go to therapy. They would rather consume hours and hours and hours of validating uh, dopamine releasing YouTube videos than actually go to therapy and deal with the problem. It's not a criticism. I'm saying that this is the way things are and that as conscientious adults, who presumably do actually want to move on with their lives, we have to look this dead on. We have to look at dead in the eyes and say, okay, this maybe isn't so good. What I am proposing to do is to develop a different map of narcissistic abuse, a map whose purpose is to help people get out, to get free of this and to never do it again. Because one of the elements of the map that we have at the moment and I'm sorry if you've been with me for a few years and you're a little bit bored of hearing me bang on about this, is this coordinate whereby we assume and give power to the narcissistic abuser in our lives. 
There's a good movie, you should watch it. It's called Renfield. It's got Nicolas Cage in. It's really good fun. Um, it does use cussing and swearing and it's, it has gory cartoonish uh, comedy violence in it. Um, and not every joke lands and it's not an amazing piece of cinema, but it's got its heart in the right place. It's a movie that's designed to help codependents escape the clutches of narcissistic abusive relationships. But the main narcissist of the movie is literally Count Dracula, played by Nicolas Cage, who's clearly having the time of his life hamming it up. A creature of myth, a supernatural being with supernatural powers makes for a great movie. But the narcissist in your life doesn't have supernatural powers. They're not a supernatural being. So that's one part of the coordinate that I hear oft repeated, and sometimes it's just implied. But the implied coordinates of the map that we're operating from can be as dangerous as the overt coordinates that we're operating from. It's simply assumed that they're all powerful. It's simply assumed that they have some otherworldly capacity to lock their gaze with you and you fall under their spell. How about the possibility that before you ever met this person, there was something lacking in your life, something lacking in your being, in my being, that really needed to be resolved, that probably could have only been resolved by going to therapy, by having an honest conversation with another adult, perhaps not necessarily in therapy, perhaps in another setting, where we became vulnerable and we exposed where we were hurt and we exposed and confessed where we were perhaps cutting corners. Perhaps our own shadow had become activated. Perhaps we weren't living in accordance with our higher values. Perhaps we were coming from a place of greed or from lust or from vengeance or simply unconsciousness. We were just sleepwalking through these things or over romanticizing life or idealizing everybody and everything, whatever it is. It's not a criticism. Please don't take this as a criticism. I see that people are very, very quick to take offense uh, in the online spaces, all of them, and to find offense where there is none and to find insult where there really is none. My intention is to help people move on with their lives. And bathing and basking in material that paints you as a perpetual and eternal victim a perpetual and eternal familiar of some powerful witch or sorcerer or vampire or werewolf is not going to help you to do that. We all, as human beings, have to learn to integrate our shadow, to individuate, to adult, to grow up, to take on your damn responsibilities and clean up your room, etc., etc. We'll have to do it. It's not super fun. It's not super buzzy. There's not, you can't get like in a little click and, and reassure each other and get your dopamine releases. And it's, it's tougher than that. It's harder than that, but it's better. One of the things that I want to suggest to you is the narcissist in your life really wasn't as powerful as your emotions, your trauma bonding, your central nervous system will be telling you as a result of the pain that they've put you through. And that's a good place to start. There's a lot more. You're aware of love bombing. You're aware of flying monkeys, hoovering, smear campaign, discard, all of the buzzwords and all of the jargon. None of them is wrong. None of them is, um, has, has no place in the narrative and no place in the, uh, the discourse on narcissistic abuse. Not one, not one of them, but the syntax in which they're delivered and the importance that's given to different pieces of them, I think is off, I think it's inaccurate, I think it lacks nuance. And those little pieces of nuance that we're missing are the places where we really could actually heal and start to move on. So on this channel, I wanna start presenting you with a different way of looking at narcissistic abuse. This December the 3rd in London, on a Sunday between 11 and 4 p.m., at a hotel that is near to London Heathrow Airport, I'm going to be delivering my first seminar on this subject. If you can and you're of a mind to, there is a link here so that you can join me there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and for your attention, and I look forward to speaking to you again very, very soon. Thanks.